And, 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 and I pray today that somehow, somewhere, that, that God can get inside us and bring a fresh revelation and an understanding of, of everything that is made available to us, that we will become partakers and that we will see the kingdom of God established on this planet. Amen? You see, uh, today there was a choice. And, and I know uh, a lot of people wouldn't have come out because uh, they were on a diet. You know what? Today there's a lot of people that are on a diet in church from the Word of God. <laughs> the Bible says to feed on it, but there's a diet. There's a bit of a fasting the Word of God. Some people might have come because, not come out because they are shy to come out, embarrassed to come out. But you see, life is full of choices. And I believe that we've got to choose to walk with God. Amen. So Father, I ask you today by your Spirit that you'd help me. Help me share that which you've laid upon my heart. Father, I pray that we would have ears to hear what your Spirit is saying. I pray, Lord, the anointing upon my life. Because, Lord, without the anointing, this is just another message. It's just another sermon. It's just another bag of wind. But, Father, I pray that the anointing of the living God would fall on it. Help us to break the strongholds of our mind. Break the strongholds of the enemy. Break through, my God, that we can see you and, and the great provision of salvation. Lord, it's not just a ticket to heaven. It's victory on this planet. It's living for you. It's living in total victory that we become a testimony of who you are and what you've done for us. And we'll give you all the praise and we'll give you all the glory. And everybody said, Amen. See, we, we've got a choice today whether we walk in the Spirit or whether we walk in the flesh. Joshua in 24, verse 15, it says, Choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your fathers or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Choose this day who you're going to serve. Whether you're going to serve the God of our fathers and what I believe he's saying is the living God, the real God, God himself, or whether you're going to serve the God of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. In other words, the God of this world, the God of the Amorites. You're going to serve God or the God of the Amorites. You're going to serve God or the God of this world. You're going to serve God and the spirit or you're going to serve the flesh. How are we going to live? He said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve God. And I want to read a scripture to you which we all know so very, very well. It's found in Romans chapter 8. And we can almost recite these, these, these scriptures. And it says in verse 1, it says, Therefore, uh, there is therefore now no, everybody say no, condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. The law of the Spirit of life. You see, there is a law that's operating in your mortal bodies. It's the law of the Spirit of life. And it has set you free from the law of sin and death. But if you don't understand what God has done for you, you live in total denial or you live uh, in, in the way of the world. But if we can understand what God has done for us in the Spirit, for the law, and what it could not do, and it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin, He condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, that we do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. You've got to understand this. I, I believe that God knows about us. Amen? He says, it, it, for those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. He's talking about people in the church. He's talking about you and I. You can live according to the flesh or according to the spirit. 
who is talking to the people of God. He said, who are you going to serve? The God of your fathers or the God of this world? Who are you going to serve? As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. So life is full of choices. God did something. that He destroyed that thing. Uh, he destroyed the law of sin and death. He broke the power of it. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is at enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. Amazing things that, that God, has, I believe in His Word, has set it out very, very plainly to us that we can understand there is therefore now no condemnation. It's amazing the flesh cannot serve God. It will not serve God. It is carnal and it is against God. It cannot please God. That's what the Word of God says. That's not what I'm saying. That's what the Word of God says. And when, when our flesh gets its own way, it's an amazing thing. When the flesh gets its own way and causes us to react, you know what it does? It then turns around and condemns you. That's why the Bible says there is therefore now no condemnation for those who walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh. And you see, because we are a part of this flesh, that this flesh is such a part of us, we've got to be able to understand that I'm not going to allow it to control my life. When it gets its own way, it condemns you. You shouldn't have done that. You call yourself a Christian. Who am I talking to, the chairs or am I talking to you guys? How about you respond like I responded when I was listening to that man preaching, amen? Amen. Come on, it's okay to do that. It's okay. We've got to change the culture around here a little bit, amen? Let's put up that sign of applause, will you? Or clap now. Do, do something, amen? Because I want to tell you, if you start clapping, I'll start preaching. If, if, if you don't start clapping, I might go to sleep, amen? Up here, I'm, uh, uh, uh. Wouldn't that be horrible? Go to sleep in the pulpit. <laughs> hey, Paul, yeah, come on. We've got to change the culture a little bit and get a little bit excited. We need a few African Americans in this place. We need a few people who'll stand up every now and then point and say, that's it, brother, that's it, brother. I was preaching in an uh, African-American church in America, and I was standing up, and before very long, I, I was in the midst of the crowd because everybody was standing on their feet shouting and yelling, and, and I, I got the fright of my life. But I tell you what, I, I, never, I never preached like that before in all my life. I tell you what, I've got something going in me, amen. You say, that was boring today. It's your own fault. <laughs> <laughs> so you get yourself a little bit excited. See, when the, when, <laughs> when the flesh gets its own way, it condemns you. It pulls you down. And because I, I was meditating on this the other day, as, and I was driving my car, and I'm thinking about the flesh, and I'm thinking about the spirit, and I'm thinking about areas in my life where, where I've obviously, obviously failed. Most of us are like the rest of us. And we've done things that are wrong. And I was meditating on this verse, driving down the road, minding my own business. And, and I was on the, the, this lane and there's somebody else on this lane. And uh, they were just a little bit ahead of me. But we we're just going along the road. And all of a sudden, this car here decides it wants to take the corner. And went right around in front of me. Shoo, around there, I almost ran into it immediately. Everybody say immediately. Yeah. Clap now. <laughs> no, no. Immediately my hand ran to the horn button. And before I knew it, out of my mouth came. <laughs> Idiot! <laughs> You thought I was going to say something else. No. But 
but immediately. And here I am meditating on this, this, this scripture that I'm going to preach. And I thought, where did that come from? One good thing about it was I was hoping that the car in front of me had a bumper sticker saying, honk if you love Jesus. <laughs> Before I knew it. And that's what we've got to understand is that this flesh part of us will react and will cause us to react and do things that perhaps we don't want to do. I say this today, thank God for His grace and His mercy. Amen? Can we give it all a thank you for that? Amen. Thank God for His grace and His mercy. Romans 7.15, it says this, For what I am doing, I do not understand. But I, what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. How ridiculous is that? And how hard is that to read? The things that you don't want to do, you find yourself doing. You find yourself reacting in ways that you shouldn't react. What you've got to understand, it is the flesh. I want to, I want to read uh, some scriptures to you. It's in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 9. We'll get there in a minute. I'm just going to read from verse uh, 19. For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all that I might win more. And to the Jews I became a Jew that I might win Jews to those who are under the law. My eyes are going a little bit funny today. It's under the law that I might win those that are under the law. To those who are without the law, as without the law, uh, not being without law towards God, but under, uh, but sorry, under the law of Christ, that I might win those who are not under the law. To the weak I became as weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Now this I do for the gospel's sake, that I may be partakers of it with you. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives a prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. You've got to do something. Athletes run, they train, they do things, they, they bring themselves into submission. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty, thus I fight. Not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I preach to others, I myself should become a disqualified. When we were, first came to the Sunshine Coast, we were looking for a building to, uh, to, to buy, to rent, whatever it might be. And I was driving along the main highway and as I was driving along, I saw this sign for, for lease. And I did a Yui in the nature strip and uh, went straight back. That was, that was the main highway at the time. And I went up and I knocked on the door of the house and the lady came out and I said, I said, I see that sign that this property is, is for lease. Oh, she said, That's not, it's not for lease anymore, it's for sale. And I said to her, I said, uh, 
He said, I've never seen that sign before. I said, how long has that sign been there? She said, 10 years. So I asked her if I could have a look at the property. And as I, as I went in, it was the pineapple shed. And as I went into that pineapple shed and I started to walk around and look, and at that time they had a lot of stuff that the, the fires had been at the big pineapple and they had a lot of their produce and, and goods uh, stored in there. And, uh, but over in one corner, there was a trophy that was over a meter high. It was a massive trophy. It was a beautiful trophy. And I walked over and had a look at it. It was all tarnished and tattered. It was just stuck in a corner. And I, and I looked at that thing, and as I looked at it, I thought, I, I just tried to, exp and I asked the people later on about it, it was a, for a sailing uh, regatta or something like that. And I started to imagine in my mind the, the day, the, the work, the effort, the training, the, the cost, and everything like that to be able to win that prize, to be able to, to become that person that, that got this trophy. I can imagine the day when all the crew of the boat was there and they, they were uh, handing out the trophy and, and the great ceremony and everything like that, the, the, the pomp and the ceremony the, and, and the, all the fame and everybody was clapping and everything was going on. Shiny, beautiful, but now here it is, forgotten, just pushed in the corner. Just pushed in the corner. We've got a strange concept of Christianity today, friends. A strange concept of what it is to be Christian. We've got so much our flesh dominates and controls and tries to rob from us. But I just thought that trophy now is of really no value. No value whatsoever. But we've got a trophy, haven't we? We're going to win the prize. We're going to be there. See, you see, friend, church is not a bless me club. It's not a, not a place where we just come for comfort. I was told before, I, I was in India and in, in a leper's colony. We walked into this little hut and you had to bend down like this to get into it. And there were people there, 50, 60 people there, no fingers. Some of them had no feet. Some of them had no noses. Parts of their bodies missing. They had no music instruments. They had a, a few uh, tins. I think one of them had a kerosene tin and another one had a couple of jam tins and a few things like that. And this guy with no hands was, was hitting on the, jam, uh, on the kerosene tin and making a noise and... People were banging the, the, the other things together and had a few stones in one and rattling it around. And, but man, there was something about their faces as they, as they had a relationship with God. Just worshipping God and letting the love of God get around their lives was an amazing thing. This, this church is not a bless me club. God is not my servant. That he's just there to do everything I ask him to do. Bless me, bless me, bless me. No, 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 no. God's more than that, amen? God is more than that. Our flesh has no desire to change. We've got to bring it to the cross and crucify it. Only the power of the Spirit within us can make this happen. We're living in a time when the church is moving away from the Spirit of God. How are we ever going to change? Because at the moment, the church, I believe, is on a collision course with the world. And all of a sudden, it's just going to be if the cappuccino is not the flavor I like, I'm not going to that church anymore. The chairs aren't comfortable. This isn't happening. Only the power of the Spirit within us. 
can help us, can break the strongholds. It's not just a good idea to change. A lot of people made resolutions, New Year's resolutions we call it. I don't know if anybody's noticed, but we're already into February. March is quickly coming. December's not far off. And we can be just playing church or else we can become the church. We can get involved. A lot of people make New Year's resolutions only to break them by the end of January. Many come out on altars only to be disappointed. You see, friends, you can't cast the flesh out. It's got to be crucified. Your flesh with its desires is not your friend. You're either led by the flesh or you're led by the spirit. And what I'm starting to see is so many people are more carnally minded than spiritually minded. Have you ever made a decision or made a promise while you're under the influence of the anointing? Who knows what I'm talking about? The preacher's preaching. The power of God's there. The anointing's coming down. He's been preaching for the last half hour about fasting. Oh, glory to God. He's talking about fasting. Or he might be talking about giving. He might be talking about this or that. But the anointing's there. He's, he's preaching under the unction. Oh, those that want to, you know, change or those that want to uh, commit to fasting or something like that. And oh, amen, I'll, I'll do that. We jump to our feet. We come out of the altar. We get our hands prayed, uh, slapped on us. And amen, we're going to do that, brother. Only to go home and wake up the next morning and your flesh says, you want me to do what? You want me to do what? <laughs> I could die. <laughs> That's the whole purpose. See, a lot of people don't understand really fasting is really to bring your flesh into submission. Because your flesh does not want to fast. Oh, we heard about the prayer meeting this morning under the anointing there, power of God, the anointed announcements come out. Prayer meeting starts Tuesday night. Amen. Oh, we're in here. Hey, I'm going to the prayer meeting. Oh, yeah, amen. Tuesday night comes around about uh, 6 o'clock and you, and you start thinking about the prayer meeting. Your flesh will say, what do you want to go to the prayer meeting for? Don't you know... Don't you know my favorite TV program comes on? <laughs> and you know how much I love it. Hey. 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 See, I've been under the anointing. I, I, I've, I've there, and, and who's going to give $1,000? I'll give $1,000. <laughs> hey. You get whiplash trying to get it back down again. Have you ever made a decision or made a promise while under the influence of the anointing only to renege two days later? You know, today there are a lot of people making decisions while they're under the influence of drugs, under the influence of alcohol, there are young girls that are giving their bodies to some young, somebody anyway, because they're under the influence. We hear the testimonies of people there that the next day they wake up in a bed naked and they can't remember a thing about it. They don't know what happened. They made a decision while they're under the influence of a wrong spirit. 
We make decisions many times when we're under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And that's where I believe we've got to, when the flesh says, don't you go, you don't need to go. Don't, don't, now come on, I need a feed. No, that's when you've got to say to your flesh, flesh, down boy. I've made a commitment, I'm going to do it. This old gentleman, as he was preaching, he started, he was talking about commitment. Talking about faithfulness. He was talking about God. I want to go to the prayer meeting. Your flesh only wants for itself. It doesn't want what's best for you. It only wants for itself. You know, some of the great people of God and great people, see, most of us are like the rest of us. It's a, that's a very true saying. And we look at the patriarchs and we look at the men of God and the women of God and, 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 the, and you know, we, we just, somehow or other, we, we think that they were up there spotless, without a problem, without a, they never had to go through what I go through. You know, I, I've said this many times, that one of the greatest tricks of the enemy is to get you to believe in you're the only person like you. And you're the only person that's ever done that. There's thousands upon thousands that have done worse than whatever you're going through right now. I've had a little girl come out on an altar call one time there because we're talking about sin and stuff like that and all the adults and that, but there was this little blonde girl came out, I can remember as well as, as if it was yesterday, bawling and crying her eyes out, tears rolling down her face, rolling down her face, and I'm thinking, what has happened to this poor little girl? What is going on? I, I could not, I, just she was broken. She was so broken. And I walked over to her and I went to pray with her and, and I, I was looking at she just could, she was, you, you could not get through to her. And eventually I said, honey, honey, because I didn't know whether she'd been molested or whether what had happened. And I said, what's going on, honey? What's happened? What's happened? She said, I've sinned. I said, oh, no, God. I said, well, what's what? She said, I said, shut up. We, we think that, you know, that these great patriarchs and all these people don't go through what we go through. And, and you know, but we're like we are and we're bad and we're this and we're that and we, condemnation comes on us. Condemnation, look, I want to tell you that there's one thing that grips me more than anything else is when I've done something wrong and that condemnation gets hold of me. Depression comes out of condemnation. You've got to fight it. You've got to get, it, get rid of it. You've got to deal with it. You've got, you got to break its strongholds. A few weeks ago, I, I said something to somebody on an altar call that I shouldn't have said. But I want to tell you, honestly, I want to tell you, the person is here in the meeting right now, but I want to tell you, I could not wait. I could not wait. All the rest of that time that I was on that altar praying for people, I could not wait. I could not wait till I got to that person and I said, I'm sorry, I should never have said that. And his grace and graciousness was enough to say, it's okay. Now. I understand. Deal with it as soon as you can because you, if you don't, it will eat you up. It will eat you up. Abraham lied to save his bacon. The best thing you can do is not get into that place to start with. But when you do, and most surely you will sometime or other. I've preached a message like this and blown it before I got out the door. Sarah is my sister. It was a half-truth. Exodus 32. Let's have a quick look in there. Nearly finished. Verse 
This is the biggest whopper of all whoppers. This is an amazing whopper. And Aaron said to them, Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, your sons and your daughters, and bring them to me. We know the story. This is when, when uh, Moses was up on the mountain in the presence of God. He lingered. He was there for a long time. The people said, he's not coming back. We need a God, somebody that we can serve. See, so you're either going to serve God or you're going to serve the small God. These people wanted a God. and So Aaron said to them, break off all the earrings and so So the people broke off the golden earrings which were in the ears and brought them to Aaron and received the gold from their hand. And he fashioned it with an engraving tool and made a molten calf. And they said, this is your God that brought you out of the land of Egypt. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. And they rose early on the next day, offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to blame. The Lord said to Moses, Go get down for your people who you brought out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They've turned aside and quickly gone away. They've gone away from the things of God. Verse 9, and that's what the Lord said to him, Therefore let me alone, that my wrath may burn hot against them, that I may consume them, and I'll make of you a great nation. And Moses pleaded with the Lord his God and said, Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people? whom you have brought out of the land, and he, and he started to, to uh, go there and so forth. But what happened there was that Moses came up to Aaron and he started to talk to him. He said, what have you done? What is going on here? You know what he said? He said, it is not my fault. It's flesh. It's not my fault. I'm innocent. He said, he said, they gave me all this gold and I threw it in the fire and this calf jumped out. <laughs> like, I rest my case. That has to be the biggest whopper that had ever been whoppered. <laughs> that had to be the biggest. Most of us are like the rest of us. God's wrath will be poured out. Don't think that his love's just gonna, gonna last forever and ever and ever. David, have you got a King James version on that? On that? You have can you can you bring up Isaiah 51, 10 to 12? I like a lot of a lot of verses I I memorize, and when I start to read them in the New Kings, I get all muddled up because I want to still read <laughs> the old King James Version. Can you find it there? Oh, there it is, a bit, long, a bit small. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Did I? Psalms. Most of us are like the rest of us. The person that hasn't made a mistake hasn't made anything. Psalm 51. That's not a bad verse anyhow. Okay, 10 to 12. Everybody read it again, out loud. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, 
and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me. Amen. You know what? We should read that verse to ourselves every day. Sorry? Now you got a voice. Where have you been the whole meeting? You know what the miracle of this meeting is? That you are all singing that in six different keys. <laughs> At least six. Eh? It sounded beautiful. Anybody here that don't drink? I mean, it's another song. Where the enemy, your flesh, he's your greatest enemy, you know that. And he brings condemnation on you. Deal with it, break it, it's done. Amen. Deal with it, break it, it's done. You don't have to rehearse it, you don't have to reverse it, you don't have to keep going over it, but just deal with it, it's done, finished, to put. I know I'm talking to some people today where the enemies had a field day. A field day. A field day. Break it, smash it. People here today that want to serve God but you're not serving God. Because God's spoken to you and you've said yes. There's a lot of people here that have been stuck. I put up my hand one time, give a thousand dollars, I'm going back 40 plus years. And that was a lot of money back then, there's still a lot of money today. But I didn't do it. And I suffered condemnation so I could give you a thousand excuses and mostly even told you a couple already. Why? But I want to tell you the day, the day that I took a check, and I wasn't even attending that church, the day that I took a check and went up into that office and handed that check over was the day that I got free. Amen. His promises that we've made to God. Clark Taylor talks about a time when he was on a horse, I think the saddle broke, something like that, and he was hanging on onto the neck of the horse and it was driving running a thousand miles an hour, and this is before he was saved. And he yelled out at the top of his voice, If you save me, I'll serve you. He got saved, but he never served God. He talks about that a lot. He talks about those days. I want to tell you, if we're going to go forward, we've just got to leave some stuff behind. We've got to leave some junk behind, isn't it? When I go to the dump and dump my junk, I leave it. Sometimes I bring some other junk back. <laughs> <laughs> Most of us are like the rest of us. Hey, if God's talking to you today and you know you need to respond to God, not to me, not to me. Don't let your shyness, don't let your fear, don't let... Negativity, don't let somebody might think I'm bad. I don't care what people think of me. It doesn't matter what you think of me. It's what God thinks of me. Really, that's going to count. I've got a lot of people that don't like me. Surprising. <laughs> but I've got one who loves me. 
That's why I love that song this morning. I can't remember the words of it now. That he would die for me. That he would die for me. I don't deserve it, nor do you. But that he would die for me. I've made lots of mistakes. and I'm sure he still will. But he died for me. And if I can get, keep my record quick, make quick recompense, well, we'll make it. Amen? I want to run the race. I want to run the race. How many people want to run that race? Responding to God is not just to fill an altar. Some people say, well, I don't have to go out the front. That's true. You don't. Coming to this church won't get you to heaven. It'll only help. Responding and coming out on the altar, it's like you're stepping out and coming, will help, I think. That's why I run altar calls every Sunday. Because I believe it helps. Anybody been helped by coming out the front? Hmm? Hmm. So we're going to stand to our feet. And if... God's talking to you and you're sensing something there that God wants to get a hold of, just come to him. Not to Neil, not to the church, but to him.